Hello everyone. Hi guys. Uh, today is construction day 35 and uh, take a look at that smile on her face. <laughs> uh, we just got back from uh, LNC Concrete Products. Uh, that's the store in Dumaguete that uh, has all that granite and quartz uh, countertops uh, available. And uh, we put a down payment on that, uh, on that white granite. Yes, I'm so happy. I really like that white granite. Yeah, we, uh, we went there today and uh, I know I mentioned on a, on a past video that uh, the guy that works there, the sales guy, said that that was quartz and uh, I doubted that. I, I didn't think it was and, and it's not. It's actually white granite. So uh, I'm glad that I was uh, at least understood the difference between quartz and granite. So uh, on the video, we did a short video there at the store. Um, I kind of explained the process of how they made that, that uh, got imported from uh, Italy. Um, it, it really is beautiful, guys. I mean, it's like glass, uh, pure white. There's not a speck of anything other than that pure white in there. And uh, Wilma fell in love with it. And uh, it's going to be a, a real nice uh, island as well as the white countertops. Uh, so now, uh, obviously, that tan theme is going to come in play. So we'll have the, the tannish in the floor. Uh, they'll be tanned for the backsplash. And then the uh, cabinet and the legs that'll be uh, in the island area, that'll also be tanned. So I'll pull it all together. And then more than likely, we'll do uh, the walls uh, a light tan and maybe the back wall of the kitchen uh, an accent color, maybe a little darker color, uh, but not, not too dark. So uh, that's going to be the theme. And uh, we'll see you guys up at the uh, work site. So if you're in the uh, Dumaguete area, uh, I highly recommend this store. The owner is extremely nice lady. Uh, she has a whole wide variety of uh, granite countertops and basically marble. I mean, I'll just do a quick sweep. It's right across the street from the airport. So there is the Dumaguete Airport, literally uh, across the street. And uh, this is the name of the company, LNC Concrete Products. Um, and they just have a whole bunch of stuff. Airplane just went over my head. So just look at the, uh, the marble. Nice. All right, so look at the smile. Look at the smile on Wilma's face. I mean, you, you can't get a bigger smile than that. So uh, we're here at the, the Granite uh, store and uh, we just put a down payment on this. Uh, the, the lady who owns this shop is extremely nice. Uh, she's gonna hold this for us until uh, we need it. We told her it's gonna be, you know, several months. She said not a problem uh, and she'll deliver it as well. So uh, we just, again, put the down payment on this. Now, uh, we asked her what this was because originally we were told uh, quartz and it doesn't sound like quartz so uh, she told me it's granite so um, it's white granite and then they said uh, this comes from Italy and what they do is they mix glass that's why it's so shiny and so unique um, I knew it was something a little different they mix glass with the granite and then they heat it up and then they press it and they got this glass texture on it. Uh, so it's pure white. I mean, obviously it's, it's out in the elements here a little bit. So it's got, you know, a little bit of dust and, and grime from, uh, from rain and whatnot. But what a, what a beautiful piece and it has glass in it. She said it's, it's very durable. It doesn't stain because of the glass and it's very easy to clean. So that made uh, Wilma happy as well. So guys, this is what we picked. Uh, 266 um, centimeters long, so 2.66 meters, uh, a long piece. Um, and this is one meter wide and this is 60 centimeters. This is gonna be for the kitchen countertops and this is gonna be for the island. And uh, in the island, there'll be a, a cutout here uh, for the sink. And then for here, it's gonna be very simple. We marked it out yesterday and I'll show everybody at the site. Uh, this is only gonna be one cut. Uh, when we measured it yesterday, it literally, it's just amazing. It came out that we're gonna have about two inches extra, two inches on this. 
uh, piece. So we're just gonna have to cut off the end two inches and then it'll be one, uh, one cut across because it'll be two pieces that'll go around the stove. Obviously one piece to the left, one piece to the right. But Wilma's very happy and uh, we got this reserved. So let's check that off the list. One thing done. All right, uh, pool update. Um, they have the two trenches dug for the two footings. Um, that is uh, splitting the pool, so one third in uh, footing, and then one third in footing, and then the edge of the pool. So, what the beam looks like, they dug down. Remember, I said they're going to go down about. Uh, 12 inches or so So they did that then they put that large stone at the bottom and then under the rebar They put a basically a beam Because it's horizontal you can see it's 12 mm and it's four strands going across and then the stirrups looks like about every 10 inches there's a stirrup and then they tie the stirrup with that wire to hold in place. And you can see that uh, at the bottom there, it's up from the rock a couple of inches. So they did that for this beam in the floor of the pool, as well as here. So again, that was that miss step, uh, pretty big miss. But uh, the contractor caught it yesterday, so, uh, you know, no harm, no foul now. They, uh, they got it done. So now the next step is to pour the concrete uh, in these two footings and then let that dry. So uh, that got completed. And what I wanted to show uh, also, viewer question, um, explain the depth of the pool. So I think I can do that. Uh, by going in this corner So this is the shallow end now look at the wall. It's about a uh, block and three-quarter down right you can see the uh, Where the rebar is you can see the hollow block. It's about a block and three-quarter and Then as you go to the deep end It's five block so that kind of shows how the slope of the pool gradually goes down uh, to the six foot level. So I believe they call it 1.8 meters deep or three feet in the shallow end. And then it's a little less than uh, two meters here on the deep end or six feet. So it'll be six feet deep here. So that uh, hopefully explains that question. And also remember, I haven't brought this up in a while. You know, the pool level is going to be somewhere right about here. And it's to get the infinity look or as close to the infinity look as we can get. So when you swim up, so basically right here where my hand is, is going to be the coping of the pool. Right about here. So as you swim up to the pool, or even if you sit on the coping, you're going to be somewhere at this level. And remember that very large rock wall. That rock wall is about eight feet high. That goes down to Wilma's Garden. Um, and then that's the opening there where the steps go. Uh, so you can see that this is the uh, nice view. Uh, call it the infinity look or as close to infinity as you can. So that's what we were uh, going for when we designed this pool. So I'm standing here right at the uh, front door of the uh, of the home and I uh, just wanted to just show you guys just the beauty of the view here. You know we're on the site all day long and I'm taking videos of what's going on and I catch myself uh, not even stopping for a second and enjoying the view. So sometimes you gotta step back and smell the roses 
and uh, I just happened to be walking by getting ready to shoot a video and said you know what I need to stop and just admire this view so we never want to take this for granted um, and it's just uh, so so blue and uh, beautiful to sit and look at all right, so I want to take a few minutes and, and go over uh, again the front reveal, those three very large beams um, that you see on the uh, 2D design that I put up once in a while. And I'll go ahead and put up that uh, picture again for you guys to see. All right, so uh, now that you got a chance to, to see what that front reveal uh, the curb appeal, if you will. Uh, they're now starting to put together that two-meter cantilever for that very large beam that's in the center of the house. So this beam is going to be 36 inches high. And it's going to span two meters out, seven meters across. And that's going to be that front, center, large reveal, all concrete. Then below it, there's going to be a 16 inch reveal. And you can see it here, the same two meter cantilever. And that's gonna span from the large beam out five meters. And then it's gonna keep going out another 3.5 meters to the edge of the carport which the carport is going to be right in this area. So essentially one beam starting from this large one out 8.5 meters and then down a concrete column. So that'll be the look on this side of the house. So to get that balanced look, um, challenged architect a little bit because the original design was to have the large beam to go across and then the smaller beam to drop below and go over that 8.5. And uh, I didn't like that look. Uh, so uh, I suggested that we build a pergola over in this area. So we're going to get that balanced beam approach that you can see on the photo. And what essentially is going to happen is that 36 inch large beam that will span the 7 meters will stop here. Again, it will be cantilevered out 2 meters for the overhang. And then below it, we created the exact same beam as the other side, 16 inch reveal. And it's going to go across this 3.5 meters, which is the width of the room and then extend another three meters out to the fence line. So it'll be 6.5 meters from here out to the column. So that gives that balanced approach. Um, and I asked the architect if you could design that. And he said, well, the only way you could do that is if, if you had some kind of a structure out here. And I said, great, let's do a pergola. So the beam that 16 inch beam which there's an example of the two meter cantilever and that's going to be the 16 inches there'll be that front face beam going all the way across and it will attach to this column concrete column with the beam going across and this will be all under roof and we'll have that area to get out of the sun over in this area here that'll be a total of five meters back so uh, we really uh, challenged the architect with that um, because we didn't want it to look not balanced so we wanted the large beam in the front and then two smaller beams underneath the large beam to balance the structure okay so all the uh, the I beams are now in and welded in place uh, and you can see that uh, on this side it's already uh, been poured into the concrete beam so this is the the final look before the trusses go on um, so you can see that they got a nice crisscross here 
Um, and then they also went up and uh, painted all this today. So this got a second coat of paint. It's a, it's a metal paint that uh, hopefully will uh, resist rust. Um, so they did that today. And then uh, they also painted that, uh, those boxes of that 16 mm. They got all that rebar uh, painted as well. So I uh, feel pretty confident that once this gets under roof, um, it'll last for many, many years because it has uh, two coats of paint on it. All right, I spent a little time with the, uh, the plumber here today. So again, this is the uh, spare bathroom. So this is the furthest point uh, to the septic. So uh, they're doing more of the, uh, the rough in today. So this is uh, the air vent for the uh, spare bathroom. Four inch pipe. Um, this is gonna be where the toilet will go. Um, this is the shower. And then there'll be a wall that's uh, 90 centimeters out. There'll be a wall here. And then when you walk into the uh, spare, you'll come this way and turn into the shower. Shower head will be there. Uh, so shower here toilet here um, right where this air vent is there'll be a wall go straight across and then I think I mentioned in past videos uh, we'll have a barn door uh, here that'll slide um, right to left uh, then in this corner of the spare bathroom will be where the uh, sink will be so sink uh, walk-in shower and toilet and you can see they got the uh, trap there for the shower That'll be two inch pipe. Um, this four inch pipe does go out the wall and is sealed off. That'll be uh, a clean out. And then once they get the two inch pipe uh, roughed in, it'll follow the four inch pipe and it will just continue along. Um, and I'll just stop the video here and then just uh, pick it up uh, out by the dirty kitchen. Okay, so I'm here in the doorway of the uh, dirty kitchen. So again, there's the spare and that's the furthest point uh, of the plumbing as it uh, relates to the uh, septic. And you can see they're roughing in the four inch pipe and then there'll be another two inch pipe uh, for the sinks, separate line. Uh, we'll come through here. Then the sink for the island, for the kitchen, will be about in this area right here. So that'll marry up with the two inch pipe. Then we'll come through the wall and then here will be a, a grease trap. So that will catch soaps and things like that coming out of the sinks and shower. So it'll be a grease trap here that can be cleaned. And then eventually they'll slope this all the way to the septic system. And then the master bath is here. So it will be two sinks, um, one toilet, one urinal, and then of course the shower. So it'll be two more lines coming out of here, a four inch and a two inch. That'll come out and marry with these lines coming this way. And then it will all head to the uh, septic system. And then uh, the two toilets will go to chamber one and then overflow to chamber two if need be. And then the sinks and shower We'll go to chamber three with a leach field going down the uh, fence line. Okay, a quick correction with the uh, pool update. I referred to the shallow end in today's update saying that it was uh, three feet or 1.8 meters. Um, that, that's incorrect. It's 0.9 meters or three feet. And the deep end is 1.8 meters or six feet. So again, this uh, metric system is, uh, is creating some challenges for me. So the shallow end is three feet or 0.9 meters. The deep end is six feet or 1.8 meters.